Hey everybody, my name is Earl Bear. Welcome back to Maya Mondays. So today I'm going to be talking to you about deformers inside of Maya and the ability to change the order in which they're evaluated. So if you've been using Maya for a long time, you probably already know this, but if you're new to the application, um, this might be useful for you, or maybe you didn't know that you could do it even if you have been using Maya for a while. So Maya normally um, does a pretty good job about figuring out what order to evaluate deformers in. So let's say you have a character that's got um, a skeleton that's been bound, or a piece of geometry that's bound to a skeleton, so you have a skin cluster on there, and you go ahead and you add on top of that maybe some blend shapes or something like that uh, for some facial stuff maybe, some morph targets. Maya is normally smart enough to know that it would want to evaluate the blend shapes before it would evaluate the skin cluster and it will order things properly. But if for some reason you set something up that Maya can't make the right decision or it doesn't know what your intent is, you always have the flexibility of going into your input stack and changing the order in which the deformations are going to be evaluated. So I'll show you a pretty simple example of Maya not getting my intent right or not knowing exactly how I wanted things to work and then how I can go ahead and fix it. So let's say I want to make a little... Um, like weird smoke thingy, like a little uh, kind of animated wispy looking smoke using geometry, sort of an old old school effect, right? So I got a piece of geometry inside of here, we'll just go ahead and we'll rotate that guy around. I'm holding down my J key to uh, snap to 15s. You can change what that snap is by double clicking on the rotate tool at any time and specifying what the uh, what the snap's going to be. And you, you know the J key is the hot key for turning on that step size, which is uh, pretty straightforward, but you may not know that if you kind of new to Maya. And let's go ahead and just scale this guy up. So we'll scale this guy up and then uh, we'll just kind of translate it up here so that it's sort of sitting relatively close to the origin and just kind of going up. We'll give it a little bit more resolution and uh, the height here so we'll give it some steps. It's slow. That looks pretty good. And on top of that I'm just going to start adding um, a deformer. So we'll go ahead and we'll go to our nonlinears. And I'll create a simple sign for this guy. And then we'll just go ahead and give this sign a little bit of amplitude so we can see which way it's going. And then we'll spin it around so that it is going down the length of my, uh, my guy correctly here. So that looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the attributes for this guy and start dialing in the way this sign looks. So um, we'll give it a little bit of higher frequency. So we'll drop that wavelength down a little bit to increase the frequency on that guy. And I don't want it wiggling at the base there. I want it to be kind of um, set at the base when I go ahead and give it some offset. You notice that I just went down here and started moving my time slider to, to see if that sign would move, and, and it didn't. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that offset, and I'm going to write an expression to that so that it, it is tied to my time slider. Here's a pretty cool tip. Inside of Maya's attribute editor, any of these fields, if you just type an equal sign, and then just start maybe writing an expression like is equal to time, I don't know, divided by four let's, or five, you know, hit the return key. I've now basically done that without having to go into the expression editor to, uh, to get to that guy. And we can just increase this out to like 500 or something. Just let it kind of flip there. So the next thing I want to do is I want to modify a couple of the attributes on this guy. I want it to, um, to start at the, a point and then kind of go out in size. Um, get larger as it, as it goes up and that little smoke trail happens that way. So I'm just going to give it some drop off to do that. And then as soon as I do that, if I just take this uh, sine wave and I scale it up a little bit and then just sort of, uh, you know, slide it somewhere like that, maybe give it a little bit more uh, lower wavelength. So now you can see I've got my, uh, you know, my smoke doing something that's kind of cool here, but I want it to actually feather off into a point, right? I want it to taper down into a point. So I'm going to add another nonlinear on top of that. We'll grab um, a couple different ones that could do it. I think I'll just use a flare in this example. So um, we'll go grab this flare and put that on there. And it looks like I need to spin that guy around here. So let's just, again, hold down that J key to kind of snap that guy around. And let's just taper that guy down. So here's the problem. Um, because that flare is happening after the sine wave, it's actually sending that guy into a point. Um, and that point's no longer moving, right? And that's not really what I want to have happen. I don't want it to go to that point and get stuck at the end there. I want it to still taper down into a little point, but have the ability to continue to move, right? So to do that, all I have to do is change the order of my deformers on this piece of geometry. So that's really simple to do. If you select a piece of geometry, you can go up here and you know um, use the arrows to look at the inputs and the outputs. Or you could right mouse click on top of the piece of geometry and just go down to the list for inputs and bring up all the connections. So you can see here's our list of 
um, inputs going to our operator, input operations going onto this polygon object. So obviously we want the sine wave to evaluate last. We don't want the flare to evaluate last. So all I have to do is grab with my middle mouse button that flare and drag it down and drop it below the sign. So now we've reordered that, and if we play it back, obviously it's going to give me the, uh, the effect that I was looking for, the end result that I was looking for. So it's just a classic example of how you can reorder um, the deformers going into the overall look and feel of your object to, uh, to get to the end result that you were looking for. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Thanks again for watching Maya Mondays. Um, please go to my YouTube channel and check out all the other different videos I've put together. The list is getting, it's getting a little bit longer than it was before. So um, hopefully you guys will spend some time digging around there and find something useful in there. Again, thanks for, uh, for checking it all out. See you guys next week. Cheers.